Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Reality Game Form Survivor Podcast. I am your host, Colin Connors. With me, as always, is my wonderful co-host, Patrick Sullivan. Howdy. We are also joined with the mysterious Prince Ty. Good evening. And the beautiful Latina flavor, Alicia Garza. Hey, y'all. And also, our special guest tonight comes all the way from Survivor Nicaragua, the one, the only, the only open casting call winner, Jimmy T. Hey, Colin, thanks for the big build-up. I appreciate it. <laughs> no problem, no problem. So anyways, we had another magnificent episode of Survivor Kick A on tonight. It started off with Spencer coming back from Tribal Council and just lambasting everyone. And he gets this amazing edit about how he has to fight for the game and how he's going to try so hard. And what I read into this as a fan was Spencer has a really good shot at winning. Ty, please explain why I'm right or wrong. Um, well, there's really no way of knowing at this point, because we've predicted like seven different winners in the last seven different podcasts, <laughs> but, um, Ugh, I would, I would argue, horn. <laughs> I would argue at this point that it's a two horse race. Um, Cass is not winning. And after tonight, I don't think Tony's going to win. So it's either Wu or it's, uh, it's a two horse race. <clears throat> Technically, it's a no horse race now. That's what they're there. We're making the Trish <laughs> horse jokes already. Nor there. Wow. <laughs> I, I would like to say, for the record, that I was going to be nice because it was her boot episode and not mention horses at all. <laughs> I tried. I tried. In any case, uh, Spencer Spencer would have the underdog thing going for him. He's not been in control at all, but at the same time, he has exhibited throughout the course of the game, and they've going out of their way to show over the course of the game that he has an understanding of how things work, mm -hmm. is a decent strategic mind. If he were to get to the end, I would feel he would have the best story in terms of, A, not screwing any of the people over, except for like LJ and Jeffra, who kind of forced him to do so and like things like that. So he would not be seen bitterly by the jury, and at the same time, he would also be likely the I mean, by virtue of being the last brain, because I don't count Cass, you know, <laughs> the smartest player that's left. So I could see if he gets to the end. I don't honestly think he will. I think Wu's taken him at this point. You think Wu is? Um, I, I think Spencer goes at four unless he wins an immunity again, but which could happen because Tony was crying like a bitch during the <laughs> uh, preview of the next now episode. So we'll see. But I, uh, I don't know. If Spencer gets there, I think he wins. I I'm not certain that he would at this point. Now, uh, Jimmy, what, what what do you make of Spencer? And do you think Spencer can win? I think Spencer's going to win. First of all, I disagree okay. with some of the previous statements. Spencer is a brilliant social game player. Uh, who, which of us America. didn't applaud him in the beginning when he said, if I have any hope in the game, in this game, it's because I'm playing with people that have no idea how to play this game. And he's Very totally true. been playing mm -hmm. Tony like a Stradivarius. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think he's probably going to win the immunity challenge next week because once Tash is gone, he's the only one that's been a consistent winner in the challenges. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. Wolves an outside chance to win the immunity, but it's probably going to be Spencer. So if Spencer's in the, in the final three, he wins. If Tony's in the final three and Spencer, Spencer still wins. So they got it. And Wolves proved tonight that he's sw he's made the switch. He's not going to get back in Tony's good graces. Why do you think Tony's crying like a baby next week? Because he lost Wu and he lost. He knows he's on the outs and probably going home next week. I like that. I like that analysis a lot. That the reason we see Tony crying is he made it so far and he realized after you know Spencer or even Wu possibly wins immunity that he's going home. Alicia, what are your thoughts on Spencer? And do you agree with this trend that Spencer can win if he makes it to the end? Oh yeah. I mean he's. He's got a jury that's definitely on his side and, like, is not... They're amused by the antics, but they don't seem like they're rooting for the players that are kind of causing more antics, like Cass and Tony. Mm -hmm. huh. um, and he's got he's he's got the classic uh, story, like Denise does, of surviving a decimated tribe and making it all the way. Well, the big difference, I would say, is I actually think... Spencer is playing a decent game, but he never was in the full control that Denise was in. And that's the thing about Spencer winning is I'm not necessarily against the Spencer win, but I think he needs to have a little bit of an asterisk next to him because there have been plenty of times where Tony's bad move has, been, has allowed what Spencer to take over. 
And we yes, had a lot of players. Oh, yeah. A lot of players. I, I gotta, yeah, go let ahead, me Jim. interject there. Though Tony's bad moves were orchestrated by Spencer. And once again, Spencer played Tony. If you remember correctly, he's the one that convinced Tony that the four, the girls were having an alliance mm-hmm. and once again saved his own ass by convincing Tony to go elsewhere. That's that's be called being outwitted. So you, exactly. so you fully buy into the Spencer narrative. So you think Spencer's got this, Jimmy? Pro- provided that um, the other people in the game, if if Wu and Cass come to the conclusion that Spencer is even more dangerous than Tony, which they haven't yet, and then that's the only chance that Spencer's got to go on home. And that's and that's even a small chance because I think he's going to win immunity. If I had to put uh, money on it, I'm, I'm betting Spencer. Okay. Well, uh, you mentioned uh, Wu, and I do want to talk about him, and especially him basically spilling everything to Tony. Because I picked Wu as my winner mainly because everyone else had already been picked. But I was still <laughs> amazed at Wu's just telling upright Tony everything. Like, I don't know why Wu thought that would be a good idea. Do you have any insight on this, Patrick? Well, if you wanted to – okay, Wu, I think, is uh... – Wait, shit, what was I going to say? You caught me off guard there because you weren't calling on me. <laughs> um, what was the question again? What, what did, <laughs> was it a good idea for Wu to spill the beans to Tony, and why did he do it? Oh, I think he just wanted to get in good graces with Tony. Uh, he said something which I thought was kind of dumb, but like it'd be awesome if we got to the end together because we've been playing this whole thing. And he's not thinking about winning. He's thinking about uh, being loyal and going to the end with the people he's been working with uh, the entire time. Which I guess he assumed would be like the three brawn with Trish, Tony, and himself. And How so, quickly he forgot about Cliff, though. That's my big thing about Wu. Well, they've all been blindsided by Tony by at one point and voted off someone, and they were outside of the majority. So um, <laughs> it's just kind of how it goes. Yeah, I mean, and, and then they come back and then they forgive him, or they realize, oh, they flipped the switch at the last minute, like Cass. Which reminds me, she said in this episode that Wu changed his mind, but wasn't it her that came up to him and, and said, <laughs> maybe yes. we should uh, stay with uh, Tony? <laughs> That's completely true. Yeah. This, uh, uh, yes. She's the most hypocritical person on that island, and God, I just really liked Trish this episode. I hate to say it. <laughs> well, I mean, well, you are dead to me, Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Trish hate love aside, I do think Patrick has brought an amazing point. Cass was the one that said, hey, let's consider, you know, not gunning against Tony. And yet she's trying to throw Wu under the bus, under her chaos, Cass, uh, guys, I would argue. And Jimmy, what do you make of Cass flip-flopping and the fact that she apparently can't remember her own history of moves in this game? Well, I think um, think Cass has made some big moves and had a chance up until uh, tonight's episode. Because it was a wise move for her to convince Wu to get rid of Tasha because Tasha was a real threat to win. Mm-hmm. So that was a good play on both their parts. And it kept them under the radar with Tony for another week. So that was a brilliant play. I think a, a little, I hope all the rest of you caught this tonight. I really believe Cass eliminated any chance she had a win by flipping Trish off on her way out. And all the jury got really disgusted by <laughs> that her. That was here. really, really stupid on her part. I love yeah, her. Yeah, see all the jury going, wow, what a jerk. But yeah. she just lost votes mm-hmm. on that. So there I think she has no that. chance of winning. Mm-hmm. But I, I'd like to go back to Wu for a second, okay. if you don't mind. Go right ahead. Um, I think Wu does have an outside chance because, just like in my season of uh, Survivor Nicaragua, when Fabio won, he was yes. just a really lovable, good character that everybody really liked. And not yes. that any, I mean, Fabio was a good immunity challenge player, but he didn't make any special great social game. He was just a really likable guy and didn't piss anybody off. I think Wu's in that same yes, California dude mm-hmm. mode. And Spencer kind of pointed out on that when he um, voted for him a couple of weeks ago. You remember he says, dude, <laughs> he was kind of making fun of his California yes. accent. Wu's a lovable guy, so he's still got an outside chance of getting a jury vote if he makes the final three. Can I go ahead get back yeah. to um, when you mentioned why was it, was it a good move or was it a bad move for Wu to go and tell Tony what had happened? Honestly, I think if Wu... It's, if Wu gets to the end with Tony in any facet, whether it's a final two or a final three, I don't know if we 100% know for certain how they're doing it at this point. But he beats Tony. 
specifically because of what Jimmy T just said. He's a likable guy, and Tony has not been portrayed as a likable guy throughout the portion, throughout pretty much the entire game. He's been portrayed as as a paranoid crackpot who easily gets played by others. So, I don't know. I my my personal reason for picking Wu over Spencer for the win is on account of the fact that Spencer's already won two or three immunities. Tasha won three immunities in a row. Eventually, that you tire out out there. I mean, it, mm-hmm. that, that's a very tough physical toll, I would imagine, to win that many challenges in a row. Particularly, I mean, what would it be like? Spencer's won two, so it would be three in a row on top of the one that he already won beforehand. And if it's a final two, then he's got to win another one on top of that. That is true. Know. That's it's, true. It's a final I, two. Spencer does have a really hard road ahead of him. However, really you're bringing up the Wu and Tony dynamic, and I could yeah. picture Wu winning, and I want to hear everyone's input on this. And I think Wu could easily win by just saying, I let Tony do uh, – Natalie White, I let Tony do all the dirty work. I knew he was going to do it, and I knew he was going to take me to the end, and I managed to not offend any of y'all. However, I'm afraid he will not be able to articulate that point. Well, Fabio uh, didn't articulate that point either. Right. He still won. <laughs> Here's the thing, though, is is that I think they might realize that and say Spencer wins immunity. They're going to think, are we going to boot the guy that's pissed everyone off or are we going to boot the likable guy that has an outside, you know, a better chance of winning? Mm-hmm. They might see that Wu's got the better chance and he might go for it. Yeah, I don't think Tony gets – I don't think Tony goes next. I don't because he – He's as good. As, him and Cass are both excellent ghosts. I, I don't see how it wouldn't come down to one of Wu or Spencer going next. So, Alicia, if there's <laughs> if a, they're playing smart. Alicia, if there's a Tony and Cass final two, will the world explode? Oh, God. Oh, uh... <sighs> I Things will that. erupt into chaos. Yeah, it'll be, it would, it would be, be I already had a hard enough time with like Lisa Welchel making the finals and then Cochran making the finals. Please don't give me like a Tony and Cass final. Yeah, but Cochran was a great player and he had some. That is enough. true. Cochran strongly yes. deserved to win his season. I will say this though when Tony <laughs> was talking about voting out Wu next. I was thinking, Tony, you're an idiot. Why would you consider voting out Wu when Spencer's still in the game? When Wu is the only one that I think has a good shot at beating uh, Spencer in an immunity challenge. To me, it just seems silly, and that would be overplaying. However, we do need to jump ahead a little bit. So let's get muddy, and let's talk about this amazing reward challenge. Jimmy, what's your thoughts on it? And were you upset that you didn't, you never got a chance to do a challenge like that? <laughs> uh, I wish you guys could have been in, uh, in, on scene when there was the challenge when we were tossing bean bags, and they, uh, I tried to. I was just trying to tell Ty- Tyrone to throw a high arc and land him on me <laughs> and line drives, and they were ricocheting off the top of the barrel. What you never got to see was the hours worth of bean bags that he tossed, and then wouldn't come out of the game when Jimmy Johnson called him out, so I could go in and win the challenge. <laughs> and I'm in Jimmy Johnson's ear going, "Are you kidding me, Coach? Right now I could have won this challenge three times. You're gonna put," and he's going, "Tyrone, come out! Tyrone, come out!" And he wouldn't come out. But of course, you don't see that in the edit. I, but we only see you, you know, talking to Jimmy. That's all we see. Oh right, uh, and, and the negative things because I'm getting voted out in a couple of weeks. Yeah, so that's how the edit rolls. <laughs> there were a, a hundred different sort of scenarios that, uh, oh. but we don't get all night. And I, let's stick to what you were talking about. So the reward challenge once again helps Tony's odds of winning. It's, and but also strengthens the likelihood of the other three teaming up against him, which they did. So um, it didn't really help him as much as, as hurt him in, in the long run. Also, again, he, um, as much as, I, you know, you guys are talking about Bull's chance of winning. I said he's an outside chance to win because he's likable. But it is an outside chance. In my, in my power ranking, he's third down the line. And Tony hurt, hurt his chances by making another critical mistake in the game by just passing in that extra idol. Mm-hmm. Why didn't he give it to Trish, who was his, his sure vote in his, in his back pocket? That was a big mistake. Well, instead, he voted for her. Yeah. He kind of just, yeah, he's really dumb. He was not really only did dumb he not protect her, which I thought for sure he would hand over that the idol, idol for yeah. her, but he like put the nail on her he, Yeah, he um he just let yeah, her go. He didn't vote for her, did he? Yeah, he did. Yeah. He did. It was four oh to my one. God, I didn't even get that. Yeah, it was a four to one. Vote. Which is why he's not 
past third on my power ranking. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> yeah, he did that and it made no sense. I, I do want to go back to the, he's uh, done. <laughs> I do want to go done. back to the end of the reward challenge, and it's that awkward moment whenever anyone wins the reward challenge where they have to pick someone, and inevitably in picking someone to go with you, <laughs> it always causes problems. And I'm thinking from a strategic standpoint, if I'm ever on the show, I never want to in- win an individual reward. Because it seems like it's not worth it. Yeah, you get pizza, but you always wind up pissing someone off. Do you guys agree you, or disagree? You saw that look on Cass's face, that that bitchy, like smug, like I'm gonna kill this woman kind of look when he, when she doesn't get picked and Trish gets picked. Because mm-hmm. um, she's just jealous of everything. I don't know. It, she gets it always makes people jealous. I mean, let's go back to the Survivor Caramel when uh, Brenda gave up the family visit, and it cost. And that's the reason why she got voted out because. She, she was nice on her reward. Jimmy, would you give up? Would you even try to win the individual rewards? Because, I mean, it seems like they always backfire. Well, it depends on how you play it, too, I think. Um, I think here's what I'm thinking on that. Uh, yes, I would try to win because it, it gives you another good argument at the final jury. But I would play it differently in that take whoever your biggest enemy is with you so they don't, they don't have a chance to strategize against you and maybe even try to swing them over because... I, another thing that nobody can understand unless you play the game. I was only in 11 days, and I was a mental, physical wreck without sleep and without nutrients, which you are doing. I lost 22 pounds in 11 days. You, you're not thinking clearly. Your mind's running a mile a minute. and So you can always, like Jeff said tonight, and I, the, he says every, just about every episode, never give up because it's so true, and it's, it's hard to keep that in mind but, so you're not uh, yeah, giving up your words win every challenge <laughs> but then conversely if you take your biggest enemy you're gonna leave all your allies at camp thinking that you're scheming with the other side you know exactly really you, what my thought process is this you try to win the rewards because damn it you gotta eat out there mm-hmm. but i mean the the simplest pick would have been to pick Wu tonight because i mean you you have to particularly when there's five people left I mean, instantly, three is a majority. So you have to figure who's the most likely to be the swing. Who was a pretty well set as the swing. I mean, it, it, it seemed fairly obvious to us, so I would imagine it was fairly obvious to everyone out there um, that Wu was kind of in the middle. And to that end, that's who you feed. That's who you give the pizza to. Because Trish is just, you know, she you know, wasn't possibly likable tonight, depending on how much you hate Cass. But she, I'm pretty sure she would have still... Just going with the flow, even if Wu got picked. And, and I, I agree with you on that. I think that Tony it was, Tony messed yeah. up tonight. Tony messed up in a lot of places Tony tonight. really, really played this episode poorly. Yeah. And, and he yeah. hadn't been playing that well to begin with. So, yeah. I will I throw, may I throw yeah. one more critical mistake yeah. Tony made as, I, as I listen to you guys and you're making good points. Um, another critical mistake he made, I mean, he's already burnt bridges by swearing on his badge. Mm-hmm. Then he's burnt more bridges by swearing on his family. Mm-hmm. Now he's swearing on his dead father's grave. I mean, how does anybody on a jury give that guy any kind of credit for morality? I don't know. Not to, not to mention the, the fact we already family. have the dead grandma thing from season seven. Yeah. For God's sake. And I mean, that everyone has swore on all of their kids and all of their dead relatives and all that sort of thing. Why? Did, I mean, it did. It's not a workable ploy anymore, to me. Anyway, I don't know from seeing it because it, yeah. it's been so and, overdone. And it just it literally just makes you look like a douche. And I completely agree. <laughs> now, which is what it, later we I mean, had. That's, that's ultimately what it looks. <laughs> we had Come out of- we had Cass telling Wu everything that Tony told her, which. I, my mouth was agape, which I don't know why I'm still surprised by the dumb moves people make this season, but it's still <laughs> shocking. And, Jimmy, I want to hear from you. Um, why did Cass do that? Why did she tell Wu everything? Why does Cass want to be Chaos Cass if apparently everyone already hates Tony? Like, why is she rabble-rousing so much? Well, there's two, two reasons. Number one, she's doing a great job of scrambling up and breaking up the alliances and getting pitting them against each other. So that kind of works a little bit. And i got to go back to what I said earlier. <laughs> you, you're so exhausted. You're so frustrated. And I, I don't know if you've ever gone two or three nights without sleep in a row and then without nutrients uh, all this in, at the same time. You just, you're just desperately grabbing. Make, you're going to make a lot of mistakes. Trust me, I made 172 in just 11 days. 172? You have that specific number? 
It's okay. That's how many times I've failed with women recently, so it's a good thing. <laughs> Anyways, um, I do think that's a really good point we got to keep in mind is just how starved these people are. And I wouldn't be so critical of Cass if when she stirred the pot – she, it was always strategic, but we saw her tonight stir the pot and then flick off Triss as she left. And I mean, when she gets to the final tribal council, Cass can make the argument, yeah, I was stirring the pot to get me further in the game, but she has no reason to justify a lot of the mean behavior she's, been, she's had. I, I, I agree 100% with that. Absolutely. But Cass uh, telling Wu led to uh, Tony finding out, and then this led to one of the most interesting things of tonight, which was, let's talk llama. Alicia, um, oh, how do you respond to that whole scenario? And what would you do if Tony was yelling llama at you? Oh, that's what he was yelling? He said, let's talk llama. Then he was like, llama, llama, llama. <laughs> I didn't know what he was trying to do. But I was just so confused when it was happening. I mean, I don't even know. I just don't, I don't understand these people. At this point, I'm kind of confused as to how all of them made it this far in the game. <laughs> because none of them are particularly shining like bright Welsh Survivor stars. But Tony was busted. He had nothing. He knew that he had been caught in a lie and that he was exposed. So he became a I mean, I feel like any t Tony's, Tony's two thought processes are either like, get really loud and like talk over people and just like yell things so they can't even get a word in edgewise or be like really quiet and go in the spy shack. Those are his two volumes. <laughs> he have spy shack and llama. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, um, let's go ahead and let's talk about the immunity challenge, which I am so disappointed that Tony, I mean, I'm not surprised Tony was bad at it, but Tony wasn't even like attempting to solve it. And Jimmy, would you say this is because of his just fatigue out there? Because he was just sliding pieces around. He had no semblance of trying to achieve anything it looked like. Yeah, well, it was clear. I mean, he even said afterwards, I, I knew I had no chance of winning that puzzle. So what he was doing was scrambling madly and hope they just fell into place somehow. And, uh, you know, that's, that's, doom waiting to happen without even trying to think. So, you know, I can't, I can't stress enough. I'd like to share this with you. So even in the short time that I was in game, everybody there had some sort of meltdown at some point. And they just matters uh, to the production team, which ones you see. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, every, it's, it's crazy. You can't, can't understate how crazy it is in game. But it doesn't look that way because they have these uh, light reflection things when they're filming the confessionals and nobody looks as, nearly as bad as they are. But you literally become like an animal living in the woods there. And the only time you come to see, uh, see other people is when they bring you out to these challenges or the rewards. I'm actually really glad you mentioned uh, production not showing everything because that kind of ties in with what I want to talk about next, which was it was kind of edited to make it look like Trish was just freaking out on cast for almost no reason. But from what we understand and from what we've heard from players' exit interviews, Cass was apparently crazy the whole time. And I'm talking about on day three, she apparently took all of Garrett's clothes and, like, hid it in the woods. And apparently she, like, knocked over part of the shelter and she's been acting irrationally the whole game. It's just we've only been seeing certain parts of it. And I actually really liked Trish blowing up Cass' game because even though... She was very dramatic about it. Everything Trish was saying about Cass was completely true. But, yes. Alicia, was this a good move on her part? Well, clearly not. Because <laughs> <laughs> she's gone. She was voted out. Well, do you think that hurt, that hurt her? Answer because is it, nay. it made it, uh, Nay, because she's a horse. Uh, so do you think it made <laughs> everyone go, let's have her at the very end? Because she's so crazy? Um... Oh, okay. So you're talking about Cass. You're yes, not talking I'm, talking, about yeah, Cass. I'm talking about Cass. Do you think Trish being like, this girl's crazy actually helped her? Helped Cass? Um, no. I don't really know. Uh, that's, I'm sorry. I'm still processing the fact that she was like doing crazy shit this whole time and. Yeah, she was I throwing know. clothes. Like, um, apparently she hit some people's clothes. And, like, there's been a lot of stories about her. If you uh, listen to the exit interviews of her being kind of. In, Super insane. Well, I feel like most of the time that there are troublemakers around camp, they usually get talked about and talked about and go pretty early because of that. Mm -hmm. 
So I feel like these people must have just been of the mentality that like, hey, we're keeping her to the end. She's a shoe in goat. And maybe they're just not showing us that part. So it's more surprising at the end if there's like a sweep of votes for someone. <laughs> maybe. I but think, I, I don't think anyone would be surprised at this point, regardless if Cass gets no votes at the end. Yeah. Jimmy, what do you uh, make of that? And did you hear any of the rumors of Cass's uh, extracurricular activities? No, I heard them now for the first time, but it doesn't surprise me. You know, they they only can show what, what do we get uh, an an hour show, and that's on three days of filming, and they're nonstop filming around the clock. So, um, you know, nothing surprises me about that. But I think if I had to give the power rating right now, I'm go I'm gonna go Spencer, Tony. Well, you know what? Tony's burned too many bridges. I'm dump I'm dumping Tony for. Last week probably be in the strongest one, and I'm going to drop him to three. So right now I'm thinking I'm Spencer, Wu, Tony, and Cass as far as the chances of winning. Um, yeah, and I, I think that's an important thing to keep in mind is we've been getting such a strong Tony edit this whole time. And I actually was – Define strong. Yeah. Define strong. He's been getting a lot of screen time and not all of it's completely negative. And he has okay. been a, he has been a narrator – so to say. However, okay. recently Spencer, especially I think we saw with today's episode, Spencer talked about every single thing that happened. He talked about after Tribal Council, the next or the beginning of this episode after Tribal Council, the next morning, we got to see his commentary on every single fight that happened. We got to see him talk about the reward and the immunity challenge, and he got a couple confessionals leading up to Tribal Council. So I think Spencer could easily be the number one pick for right now. Just like uh Jimmy thinks as well. Anyways, Ty, are you ready to give out your power rankings? I am. Okay, then let's yeah. go ahead and let's breeze through some power rankings. Very good. Um, it'll be fairly quick because we've really been discussing them all as a group throughout the episode. Mm -hmm. Cass is at number four. Uh, she one figure saluted. I mean, that was basically just the 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 icing on on the zero vote third or second place <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, cake, so to be uh, so to speak. She's. She's been terrible all season. She's been hypocritical all season. She's killed my brain cells all season. She will not be rewarded with a million dollars. She will not pass go. She will not receive two hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, hopefully she's not second place. Because if she's second place in the final two, then she gets a hundred thousand dollars for for damaging my brain. And that would make me very sad. Maybe she so. can buy some better suits then. Oh, fuck. <laughs> the thought okay. of her. The thought of her in a courtroom. Good God. I. It, it would be like. Miss Cass goes to Washington, and then Washington just burns to the ground. <laughs> okay. anyway, so who's your number three? Uh, Tony. Um, all season long, I mean, I, he's been a visible character, but I don't feel that he's been projected as a winner based on the paranoia that they have constantly shown, based on them showing him turning on people at the merest suggestions of trouble, like Jimmy T mentioned with Spencer this evening. Um, I... And what really tips it off is he literally had a chance to have two of the final four in his pocket. He could have forced a tie, you know, caused all sorts of paranoia between groups that weren't as strong if he just used his idol on Trish. Instead, he randomly votes her out for some reason. To what? To try to bluff that he has an idol that works at the final four? Exactly. Yeah. It doesn't make sense. He, he, it, it doesn't. It simply doesn't. So to that end, I can't put him near the end. I, I feel like he has... Unless he's against Cass, he has no shot. That's my. It has to be a final two, and he has to be against Cass for him to win. Um, I still got Spencer at number two. I feel like Spencer, if he's had a feel good at it, he's been an underdog. He's been visible. He's been a fairly positive at it, which kind of reminds me of Malcolm in his first season. I could easily see him getting fourth, just like Malcolm did. Everybody thought Malcolm was getting to the end, and he did not. He oh. did not. He fell. At fourth, and then and such a sorry, cry. Alicia, I realize you just died a little inside. So I brought <laughs> that up again, but I don't know. I just I would think that winning four immunities and three of them in a row would be a pretty tough. I mean, if he gets to the end, he wins, no question. I I don't deny that at all. I think he goes. I think he goes at fourth. I think Wu wins because Wu is likable. Wu is Wu is the Fabio of this season. He didn't play an exceptional game by any stretch of the imagination, but he's a good personality, and the people who he would be at the end with have played terribly. <laughs> so, and, um, and that would be enough to win. 
before we wrap things up, I do want to talk a little bit about Trish. Um, I do want to take a moment and all as we can mourn her no longer being on. And Jimmy, I want to hear from you. What what kind of impact she do you was, think she Trish... was the glue that held this game together? Yeah, you can say <laughs> she was the glue that held this game together. But Jimmy, <laughs> what kind of impact do you think she had on this game? And do you think she w- received like a good edit? Do you think she played a great game? Do you think she was just a follower? I'd love to hear from you on this. On Trish? Yes. Your overall opinion on her of her? I think she was, um, to be, you know, nothing against her. She played a good game to get as far as she did, but she didn't do anything outstanding. Basically, she was uh, one of Tony's cronies and just went with. Even when other people started to realize Tony's a backstabber and a liar, she stayed loyal to Tony. That's she completely didn't do true. Anything, challenges. She didn't do. She didn't give any real gameplay. And and the most games she tried to play was on LJ. When LJ joined the tribe, <laughs> that is true. She, uh, she, she tried to get her a, groove back there. She tried. Uh, she had a little crush on LJ, but I think uh, during what you just said was extremely important, especially when they voted out Jeffra, and we saw Trish immediately go, "Oh, Tony, I'm still your best friend." We never really saw anything from her, and I mean, she did have an under the radar game, but it just, I mean, she backed the wrong horse. Yeah. And um, Jimmy, <laughs> well. <laughs> From what I understand, you have a new Survivor blog. Yeah, I've been uh, just doing it on uh, Thursday nights on Get Real LOL. But it's, uh, I do a show called The Merge, and I've been blessed with uh, a lot of friendships as a result of playing the game with mm-hmm. people in the game. So i got Bob Crowley coming on with me tomorrow night. Uh, i got Christina Chad next week doing a uh, season wrap-up with me on Thursday nights. And it's a pretty cool thing. It's just uh, we take we take calls. I bring on a, a guest of another survival player besides myself, and we talk a little bit about the episode, about our experiences in the game, and then we take callers. Usually, get to two or three callers. It's an hour show, mm-hmm. and it's been a lot of fun. Awesome. And where can we find this again? And I am going to post a link a link on our YouTube page and on our Facebook page, so that way our listeners can view you as well. But where is this again? Um, I'm I'm not sure. I, I'm sorry, I couldn't give you the direct link. If you go to my Facebook page, call them with Facebook friends. So yeah. I'm sure you can find it on my Facebook page. I will repost. It's on uh, getrealol.org. Has a um, a radio blog. Right, All right. Right, right on their site. And um, we have we've had a lot of fun with it. I hope uh, you'll listen in and call in. I got uh, tomorrow night. I got Bob Crowley, who's become a good friend. I'm going up. His place Sunday. He's got a survival challenge he's doing. He's got a campground up there, and he's just a good friend and a brilliant guy, as you know from seeing his season. Well, we actually had him on for our finale last uh, season. He was a great. Oh, yeah. I loved having him. He was him fantastic. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, he's amazing. You know, I go up there. I help him cut trails, and we work and laugh together. You know, he's got two forestry degrees, and he can drop a tree next to the stump that it's on, and then drop that same tree and make another stump with a chainsaw. It's amazing the, his physical ability, and you know, is is matched and exceeded only by his mental capacity to figure things out. He's quite a brilliant guy and a, and a good friend. So, would you say he deserves a spot on Survivor Legends? Oh, no question. Well, for, as far as creativity goes, I mean, I, I Boston Rob is definitely one of the all-time greats because the way he masterfully played that last season, where he took two people who's only Argument was they were loyal to him, to the mm-hmm. final three. Um, other than that, you know, uh, Cochran has been a brilliant st- strategist, but uh, Crowley was making the fake idols, and his just joy for the game. Remember, he built some chairs and tables out of wood and says, oh, i got to do a couple of these when I would get... He had no pressure in the game. He's just out there having fun, and that's... <laughs> you know what? That's a lesson for all of us. Just like life, Survivor is the same thing. Just go out and have fun with it. And don't take it too seriously, and you're going to win. Well, that's actually an amazing thing to close out on. And I want to thank everyone so much for coming on, especially to you, Jimmy T, taking time out of your busy night to sit and chat with us Survivor nerds. And I want to thank everyone out there who is listening to the podcast. And I will see all of you next week for our finale with an amazing special guest, 